Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a bit different. Recently, of course, there was the Zine Quest, I think it's still active, Zine Quest uh, happening on Kickstarter, which is where a bunch of independent you know, games and some actual studios come together and produce a bunch of really interesting, unique indie RPG games. Uh, some of them are, you know, for other systems, some of them are their own things, there's a lot of adventures on here. Zine Quest is awesome, if you guys have never participated in it before, you should check it out. I wanted to go through and show you the different things that I backed in this Zine Quest. Now, uh, I am not associated with any of these in any way, except that I've backed them. Um, and all of them have hit their pledge goal, so at this point, uh, you know, they're, they're all going to come out. But they all have some time to lift to go, and I thought if you're interested in them, you can jump in. Because I think some of these are really cool. The first thing I'm going to be looking at is Kogarashi, which is a true D6 role-playing game inspired by Fantastical Feudal Japan. This is a really cool uh, little game coming out. Now, it's I think it uses a lot of AI art, but the AI art is then touched up and it looks like it's really good. I mean, I, I like it a lot. So what's Kogarashi? Kogarashi is a TTRPG set into a mystical world where the echoes of feudal Japan blend with the fantastical. Step into a realm where your honor matters more than your life, filled with dangerous creatures, adventure, and intrigue. So it's just an interesting basic D6 game for uh, solo adventures. There's rules, going to be going to be rules for solo adventures, solo leveling. But uh, I, I assume that you can play it for more than just uh, just yourself. Uh, it's going to be a fanzine, a small format. Uh, so it, you know the, the the author has been with the game from the very beginning. There are six classes, um, and you, you know, great art that goes with each of them. I just like the presentation here. And I don't know. I think this is a great little book, uh, booklet. And I think it, it could be cool for uh, for just a little, um, I don't know. I like D6 systems. I, I've never really played um, in like a, a feudalistic Japan, uh, Japanese game at all. Uh, I never had, you know, the Oriental Adventures back in the day or anything like that. So, so this really is um, kind of my first foray into these kinds of games. But I think it's cool looking. Uh, it's really cheap. You can back it for almost nothing. Um, and just see if you like it. I don't know. I thought it's kind of cool. So that's one thing that I'm, that I'm backing. The next is something that I am not quite sure how to pronounce. I think it's Fango Sahala. But I have no idea. Fango Sahala. But it could be something else because I don't know how to read those sorts of things. You guys know if you've watched my channel enough, <laughs> pronunciations are not my, my, my forte. This is a really interesting little thing. Um, so it's, a, it's the Swedish word for dungeon. So it probably has some other way of pronouncing it that I don't, I don't know Swedish at all. But it's a really interesting little game. An epic adventure with the elegance of instructions from everybody's favorite furniture store. So it's a really, really easy instruction manual with these really charming art uh, with very simple stats and attributes and ways of playing the game. Some interesting rules like doom stacks, right? Where you stack dice and then when they fall, bad things happen. Uh, Really easy prep. I don't know. I think it's a little cute little booklet. Um, and I, I think it's, I don't know. I just like it. It's super charming to me. And I can imagine having a lot of fun with this. And there's some stretch goals that have already been unlocked. Um, so I think, check it out if you're interested in something kind of like this. It's just a cute little booklet. And that's another thing. A lot of the Zine Quest stuff is small, uh, really, really niche. And uh, I think a lot of people can like it. Um, this is a really interesting one. It's The Details of Our Escape, a new TTRPG. This is a really interesting one just based on the art and the concept here. The concept of this RPG is that you're kind of a caravan. You're a caravan moving across a, a long landscape, and it's going to be a pretty big booklet, 30 to 50 pages, saddle-stitched zine. It has dominoes, so the game kind of has played with dominoes rather than dice. But I just think the art is really cool looking. Uh, it's a caravan-style TTRPG. You control groups of 10 to 600 people within a larger 2,348-person caravan. And then you draw dominoes at the start of the game, and then you can go through it. And there's some really cool, um, there's some really interesting fiction in the background, but I just love the art. It reminds me, uh, really, it reminds me of Ultraviolet Grasslands. Um, it's really, really cool. This is something that I think is worth checking out. You know, maybe you don't end up going with it, but just looking at it and seeing if it's the kind of thing that appeals to you. I just think it's a cool concept and the art is really good. So I, I'd like, I'm hoping to, hoping to get this one when it comes. 
um, the details of our escape. Kind of a cool idea. Here we have Rune Cairn Warden Saga Remastered. Now, Rune Cairn, I think, has been out there already. This is a remastered version of the book. Norse fantasy souls like tabletop RPG. A really interesting idea here. And again, the art is cool. I like it quite a lot. Uh, the quick start rules are all free. You can download them right now. Death is not the end. Strap on your bearded axe and Lindenwood shield. Delve into the Forsaken Barrow and cleanse the Draugr within. They will overwhelm you at first, so prepare to die. But when you wake up at the bonfire, you'll know what to expect for your next attempt. Parry their attacks, disarm them, and hack them to pieces. Defeat the undead within and claim the soul remnant they protect. Really interesting idea. I like the art so far that I've seen. And it just looks like a, you know, a very interesting little book here um, that uses some of its own art. It uses some art from the uh, public domain. I think it's kind of cool, different backgrounds. As you can pick here, weapons as class. It's an interesting idea, straight out of, you know, Knave and that sort of thing. Because, of course, Karen comes from as a Knave hack, I believe. And then uh, a really interesting wraparound variant cover, if you want to get the full print version. But even if you don't, uh, you can just get the PDF version, and you'll have a really interesting RPG here, which might be worth checking out. The next one I'm looking at is a Dragon Bane supplement, Shadow Over Gloomshire, a gothic horror adventure for Dragon Bane. Now, I've reviewed Dragon Bane. I really like it. I know that it just doesn't seem to be everybody's bag at the moment, um, but I, I think it's really cool. I like it a lot. And this is a really cool supplement. So if you're in the, in the, in the realm of Dragon Bane, if you've, been, if you've found that to be cool or interesting, then maybe check this one out. Uh, it's got a really cool... Uh, concept and the, the art for it is great. It just fits right into the rest of the idea. It's an adventure for Dragon Bane that it revolves around the remote village of Gloomshire located in a dark forest valley with a terrible history. So it's gothic horror, creepy, but the art inside is really good, as you can see. And uh, it's going to be a pretty big little, uh, well, a pretty big little booklet, 32 pages, saddle stitched, staple, uh, with some magic items, unique monsters, NPCs, random tables, new professions, locations, illustrations, and maps. Uh, really cool looking. The, the maps look great inside. The characters look great inside. Two new professions. And then the details on the team and some other pieces of art. So I think this is a great one if you're interested in Dragon Bane. If you're not interested in Dragon Bane, it looks like it could be still a cool adventure. Um, so if you're in the mood for a really well-illustrated adventure to put on your shelf, even if you're not um, you know, a fan of the particular system, you can check this one out. Shadow over Gloomshire. The next one that I wanted to look at is a really small one, The Tower, a system agnostic puzzle dungeon crawl. A fantastical tower home to a puzzling recluse. Were you invited or did you just wake up here? Either way, now you have to escape. It's a really cool idea, um, but there's not a lot of detail given except just a really brief, this is going to be a very, very small little booklet, right? 20 plus pages, so it's very small. Um, you're looking at a few creatures, but there's going to be puzzles and riddle rooms, and I just like the look of it. I'm not sure. There's not a whole lot about it here, but I think it's kind of a cool idea. And so I kicked this Kickstarter. You no, know, it's it's pretty. You can, you can obviously pledge at a low level, but you can also just get a PDF, which I got just a little um, cheap PDF, and uh, you can see kind of what the whole deal is here. I guess a few more to go. The next one here is Secret Vault of the Windswept Isle. This is for old school essentials. I really like this one so far. Uh, it's a classic fantasy horror adventure for OSE, um, where death is assured, but not the end. So it was funded in 14 hours, all stretch goals unlocked, so if you back it right now, you're going to get the whole kit and caboodle. The 32 pages adventure with a cursed island, a treacherous trap, an undead-filled dungeon with seven illustrated mapped and keyed rooms. Characters get a second chance as ghosts, maybe even another chance at life. There are captivating and dangerous NPCs, new monsters, and undead, and it was written and illustrated by humans, so no, un no AI art or no AI uh, construction was used here, which a lot of, you know, it does matter to a lot of people these days. Uh, it matters to me. Um, really cool looking zine, beautiful cover. The inside looks awesome. The way that the maps are presented on the pages looks really, really good to me. And uh, just the art is charming, and I think this is a, a really delightful one. So I would recommend checking this one out if you're at all interested in a cool adventure for old school essentials with great art and it looks like great design. And again, it's Kickstarter, so I can't review it ahead of time, but just what I, I like what I see so far. And the next one is really, really special to me. It's the 8-bit theater role-playing game. Now, I don't know if you guys ever read 8-bit theater back in the day. This is, it was such a good webcomic. I just 
absolutely loved it. Brian Clevenger, I think is how you say his name. Brian Clevenger, who has done Atomic Robo and other things since then. But at the time, it was like his, you know, his, his breakout thing was 8-Bit Theater, which is a sort of a, a webcomic you know, using the old Final Fantasy 1 sprites. Um, it was so funny. Well, there is a role-playing game with, the, um, with that whole system, and it's from Brian Clevenger himself. As far as I can tell, he's, he's, uh, he's one of the main people involved. Uh, a tabletop role-playing game, it is technically playable. <laughs> I love that. And it just looks amazing. I mean, I am such a big fan such a big fan of 8-Bit Theater. Now, of course, the art is going to be slightly different uh, because Final Fantasy is a thing that people own, right? Um, so you have to understand that it's not going to be, you know, the, the, it's not going to be the uh, sprites from the from the game. It's not going to be that. It can't be because, again, it's it's not going to have the words Final Fantasy here. It's not going to have any of that copyright copywritten stuff. It's just going to have a new take on the characters and on the world and on that sort of stuff. So when you're the light warriors getting escaped to save a bunch of worlds, but it always goes wrong because they are real bad at this. That's what 8-Bit Theater is, right? That's the kind of RPG you're going to play. Where you're the light warriors, but you're really bad at being light warriors. I can't wait to see how this game turns out. Um, really excited for it, and I think it's really cool. So there's a bunch of extra classes you can get to. So there's the main four, but you also get Ranger, Berserker, Rogue, and Cleric. A lot more of accessories. You can now play Garland, Vilbert, Bike, and Drizzle. Instead, there's a bunch of extra Dark Warriors you can play. There's White Mage, Black Belt, King Steve, and Dragoon now as well. A whole bunch of extra characters from the comics. From the comics. So 8-Bit Theater. This is what I'm really excited about. I hope you guys check this one out because I, I think it'll be great. There's another one here. This is only four days to go. This is Million Colored Sun. Uh, this is uh, by ZineQuest. It is, or it's for ZineQuest, but it's a rules light sword and sorcery RPG. Now this is really, really, I think it's cool. It's charming. It's got that very particular Gonzo, uh, yeah, James West uh, art style. And it is, uh, some people love that sort of thing. It's got a free sample of play. Some people really don't. You know, some people really don't like the, that kind of style of art. But it's, just, it's a new, simple OSR RPG for sword and sorcery games. There's a lot of those out there. If you're interested in that sort of thing, you can check it out. Uh, there's also other uh, art styles inside, Joshua Burnett. Um, there's a bunch of tables in the game, and I think that's uh, one of the reasons I want this, is the sample tables. Who is the big villain with a whole bunch of really you know, ridiculous, uh, ridiculous RPG names? <laughs> uh, or villain names. What's in the book? You get character creation, rules, combat, fortune, magic, a uh, sample of play with, with uh, an interlude. And you can actually download, I think, that right now. Game Master Guide, Running Sword and Sorcery, Monsters, Sample Adventure. And then appendix, appendices of useful tables, sample PCs, and inspirational materials. So I think this is going to be cool. I, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to check this one out. I like the idea here quite a lot. I, I, this sort of art style, a lot of people just don't like it, but it, it appeals to me. It reminds me of some of the art from Dungeon Crawl Classics and from the, you know, the, the Black Pudding zine and all those things. I like that a lot. The next is something uh, that I'm also very excited about, Beetle Knight, a bug-sized role-playing game. Now, this I am really excited about because I have just been dying, dying for Hollow Knight Silk Song. Um, and, of course, we don't know when it's coming out yet. But it just, it just it, of course, it's so heavily inspired, or it seems to be heavily inspired by the Hollow Knight games um, that I, I saw this and I was like, I have to have it. So Beetle Knight is a bug-sized tabletop role-playing game for Zine Quest. You know, what's nice about this, of course, is that you know the products that are out there for Mouse Ritter will be completely compatible with this, or mostly compatible with this, and vice versa. Things that come out for Beetle Knight will, be, will work for Mouse Ritter. So if, you, if you're into that game, then there's probably a lot of easily compatible stuff already out there. Um, for a game like this. But I love the art. A knight crosses the threshold. I think it's really cool looking. And uh, I'm excited to to check it out. You get a cool lithograph um, book. A oh, risograph, excuse me, not lithograph. Risograph uh, cover. You get the world guide. Um, I love the art style in this book. And the system seems really interesting. You use these contests. Um, so... Uh, for example, if a knight with a presence die of d8 is trying to convince the termite queen to make peace with the worm riders of Pete, they would roll their d8 presence against the arbiter's challenge dice. In this case, a d12 for the stubborn queen. If the knight rolls a 6, the arbiter rolls a 4, the knight is successful. So there's competitive rolls, but you're using different dice to compete. 
that's interesting. I like that system. It's an interesting idea that, you're, that certain villains are going to have certain competitive or certain dice. Monsters are going to have certain dice, and your goal is to try to roll over their, their challenge. But it's just going to be, I mean, I don't know, not just beetles. You can play as other things, too. Beetles, bees, jumping spiders, lightning bugs, pill bugs, moths. Cool little zine, very simple character sheet, and the stretch goals are all unlocked. So you've got the whole thing. And there's a quick start version of the game if you want to download it. So I think this is cool. I hope you guys do, too. Beetle Night, a bug-sized role-playing game. I definitely recommend checking it out. On that note, there's also a final one here is Tiny Fables which is an adventure collection from Mouse Ritter, inspired by folklore and fairy tales. Now, I love Mouse Ritter. I, I, I don't play it as much as I should, but I love the adventures for it. They're so charming, and it brings me to you know, Red Wall and um, Mice and Mystics and uh, all, of these, all of these things that I love so much. And so Mouse Ritter is right up my alley there. So when I saw this, I had to fund it. I had to help contribute. So the art is so charming. It's a sandbox-style adventure from Mouse Ritter, set in an old-growth forest warped by fey magic. Echoing the themes of classic folklore and fairy tales, this module confronts players with the narrow distinction between the warmth and darkness, cruelty and whimsy, danger versus reward. That's my favorite vibe for almost anything ever. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So there's a cool little zine here. Um, I highly recommend checking it. It's a digital mock-up text and layout, not final, but it's a cool little book. 60 pages, uh, five adventure sites, an overworld hex map, uh, hex map Thimblewood Village, 40 plus creatures, 70 plus items, spells, treasures, and conditions. And there's, of course, the, the uh, Mouse Ritter uh, uh, item cards that you can get. I just love this art. It's so charming, so delightful. Encounter restless ghosts, talking shadows, merfolk pirates, and tomb-robbing rats. Delve into the suffocating darkness of haunted mausoleums and booby-trapped castles. Set sail on the waters of a cursed lake and meddle in the cutthroat politics of the fairy kingdom. Discover legendary items rumored to only exist in nursery rhymes. Return to the safety of Thimblewood Village to rest, or spend hard-earned pips, and make plans for the next adventure little teapots and things over the lake. Map of the adventure site, Heartache Lake. Particular adventure site. So, oh, that's such a good one. Those who venture into the mob shadows rarely escape without leaving something precious behind. They're stealing his scissors. Oh, they're about to cut his shadow. Ooh, that's really cool. They're not stealing his scissors, they're about to cut his shadow. That's a cool image. So, I think this is great. I highly recommend checking out um, Tiny Fables which is so cute and so delightful. Um, you know, and here's the thing, it is for Mouse Ritter, and it looks like it's pretty heavily for Mouse Ritter, but it would really, it seems to me, the tone of this particular adventure would work for something like Dolmenwood really well, and so I think that I'll be mining it for, for Dolmenwood stuff to use. Because there's a fey forest, and there's that tone between darkness and, and, and whimsy that I love. So, highly recommend checking out Tiny Fables as well. Anyway, these are the different... Uh, yeah, the different pledges that I've made over the past uh, few weeks uh, as Zine Quest has been going on. And uh, there's still a few days to go on some of these and, and a couple weeks to go on others. So, you know, take your time, but I would highly recommend checking out any of these. Um, and I'll leave links below to where you can go to the particular ones if you're interested. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll see you in another video.